After hundreds of years of exploration, do we really know how we evolved into modern humans? A shocking discovery near Harbin, China, has shocked scientists and shaken up the human family tree. Are you ready to learn the truth about our origins? You could have never guessed it coming. Scientists have led us to believe that humans followed a linear pattern of evolution. It implies that one species was followed by another advanced species until the birth of Homo sapiens, or modern humans. However, recent findings show that this theory is far from the truth. The evolutionary journey of modern humans began with a single step, or the ability of man to walk on two legs instead of four. The credit for this transition goes to one of our earliest known ancestors, Sahelanthropus, who initiated the shift from ape-like movements around six million years ago. Believe it or not, Homo sapiens didn't appear on the scene for a million years after Sahelanthropus. This makes us wonder what human species existed between the time man learned to walk on two legs and the advent of modern humans. According to scientists, this was the long interim, when several different human species lived, evolved and died out, intermingling and sometimes interbreeding along the way. Over time, human bodies changed, and so did their ability to think, and the gradual development of tools and technology accompanied this evolution of humans. But our knowledge of older hominin lineages is limited, so scientists continue to examine ancient bones and tools, dig into our genes, and recreate the changing environment that played a significant part in our evolution. Get ready to find out how it all started. The world has finally accepted that Homo sapiens originated in Africa. However, there's no evidence to suggest that the arrival of modern humans occurred in a single place and time. In fact, multiple groups of human ancestors with distinct features lived in habitable areas around Africa, each growing physically and culturally in relative isolation. Although these species evolved independently of each other initially, climatic changes across Africa and its landscape forced them to intermittently mix and share everything from tools to their unique genetic makeup. This process eventually helped create the distinct gene of modern humans. Have you ever wondered how scientists track the movements and evolution of our ancestors by examining their genes rather than fossils? The oldest recovered DNA of an early human relative was found in Cima de los Huellos, the Pit of Bones. At the bottom of a cave in Spain's Atapuerca Mountains, scientists found thousands of teeth and bones from 28 individuals who somehow ended up in the same place. The 430,000-year-old fossils belong to the oldest known Neanderthals, our most familiar close relatives. After scientists painstakingly teased out their partial genome from these remains and used the molecular clock to determine how long ago the oldest Neanderthal roamed the Earth compared to humans, they found that a common ancestor lived between 550,000 and 750,000 years ago. As you can see, genetic studies cannot provide accurate dating, but they still offer researchers better insight into the evolutionary timeline than bones alone ever could. The next fact will blow your mind. Scientists are certain that modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans, share a common ancestor. However, their identity is still a mystery. It could be Homo heidelbergensis, a species that existed from 200,000 to 700,000 years ago. Researchers believe that Homo sapiens may belong to the African family tree of this species, whereas the European branch leads to Homo neanderthals and the Denisovans. While we know that human evolution began in Africa, finding ancient DNA is a real challenge since the ideal condition for long-term preservation is cold and dry weather, an environment quite the opposite of Africa. Eleanor Scary, an archaeological scientist, says, we currently have no ancient DNA from Africa that even comes near the timeframes of our evolution, a process that is likely to have largely taken place between 800,000 and 300,000 years ago. Now that we have accepted that human evolution was not linear, 
and that diverse groups of humans lived in different places around the world simultaneously. The debate of who and where our ancestors hailed from becomes even more heated. A recent discovery has gripped the scientific community, forcing them to reconsider their stance on human origins. The story begins in the early 1930s, after the Japanese invaded northeast China. A group of workers were raising a bridge near Harbin, a city in China. When one of them saw something peculiar in the river mud, it was a complete human skull. With an elongated cranium and a heavy protruding brow bone, set atop a gaping square that once housed eyes. The worker immediately knew that he had stumbled upon something extraordinary and quietly hid the enormous skull in an abandoned well, and before his death, revealed the long-held secret to his grandchildren. Once the skull was recovered and handed over to Hebei Geo University of China in 2018, the lead paleontologist on the research team, Xing Ji, sent his picture to Xi Ni, a paleoanthropologist at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Ni was shocked to see the skull, because the fossil was surprisingly well preserved and demonstrated a strange combination of features. The Harbin skull was squat and wide, with a pronounced brow common in ancient hominins. There was only one tooth in the jawless cranium, but the tooth had three roots, a characteristic that is rare in modern humans. And let's not forget the size of the skull, which was spectacularly large compared to its modern counterparts. However, other features of the skull were similar to our own species, like the flat and low cheekbones. 90 years after the skull was first retrieved and hidden, a study published in The Innovation declared it to be the remains of a new human species, Homo longi, or the Dragon Man. Other studies revealed the skull probably belonged to a male who died around 146,000 years ago. The distinct features of the fossil entered a unique combination of ancient and modern anatomical characteristics, placing the Dragon Man in uncharted territory on the human family tree. Zijun Ni says, I've held a lot of other human skulls and fossils, but never like this. What we're about to tell you will leave you shocked. Ni believes the unique shape and size of the Harbin skull is evidence that the species were closely related to several other astonishing human fossils recovered from the same time period across Asia. He also theorizes that the Dragon Man is closely related to our own species, perhaps even more so than the Neanderthals. For many years, scientists have believed that Neanderthals are our closest ancient relatives. However, this recent discovery changes everything. Do we really belong to the family tree of the Dragon Man? If yes, who is to say the next ancient fossil discovery will not challenge this theory and place Homo sapiens under another family tree? Here's a thought worth mentioning. Until relatively recently, several species of hominins coexisted. But isn't it strange that we're the only hominins left alive? The discovery of the Dragon Man is a massive accomplishment as it allows scientists a glimpse into the intricate and overlapping branches in the human family tree. However, like all discoveries, this one was met with considerable criticism too. Many scientists and experts argue the Dragon Man is not very different from other discovered species and they're not satisfied with its position in the hominin family tree. Buck, from Liverpool John Moores University, claims that most of the Harbin Skull's prominent characteristics seem to be a matter of scale rather than unique features. She argues that slight variations are common and expected among individuals of the same species. For example, differences in sex, age, regional adaptations, and age of the fossil can alter some fossil features. If we disregard the variations, where do we place the Dragon Man on the hominin family tree? Maybe it could be grouped with Homo daliensis, a species whose remains were found in Shanxi province in northwest China. The Dali cranium fossil also displayed a mix of modern and ancient traits, similar to the Harbin skull. So, instead of alienating the Harbin skull, scientists can place it under another close relative of modern humans. However, all controversial theories may be put to rest as new evidence emerges 
through genetic analysis of the Dragon Man, and while Ni nee and his team continue their research, they are proceeding with caution, as the procedure means destroying small parts of the fossil. Either way, one thing is for certain, nature rarely paints inside the lines, and the categorization of hominin fossils will only get more complex and confusing as new discoveries surface. That's all for today, folks. Thanks for venturing into the past with us. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell for more jaw-dropping videos. Until next time, stay curious.